The following information is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. The views expressed do not reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. So do you know your cholesterol number? Do you really know your cholesterol number? I'm not talking about your HDL, about your LDL, even about your VLDL, or even your total cholesterol. Believe it or not, those are not your cholesterol number. Your cholesterol number is something completely different, and those numbers I just mentioned have actually nothing to do with cholesterol. <laughs> what does all this mean? Dr. Lewis is about to tell you, and he's about to give you a health awakening. So what exactly is cholesterol? Do we really understand what it is, what it means, and what we need to do about it? Well, someone that can help us understand all this is Dr. Tom Lewis. Dr. Tom, welcome to The Health Awakening. Thank you so much, Scott. Glad to be back here. Now, you've got a lot of experience with uh, uh, chemistry in particular. Can you explain your, uh, your background and what it has to do with our topic today, cholesterol? Well, so I'm a medical data scientist. I have a doctorate from MIT, and then I went to the Harvard School of Public Health studied toxicology and nutrition in the public interest. And so actually, Harvard teaches us an awful lot about the cholesterol molecule, but no one's talking about it. Let me give you an example. I would argue that almost no one or maybe even no one knows what their actual cholesterol level is in their body. But before I go into that, I thought I'd just drop that bomb to start with. Even though you think you do, you know your total cholesterol, which is irrelevant, really. But see, the cholesterol molecule itself is one of the most important substances or molecules in all of human physiology. According to Harvard, in a publication they put out to the public and internally in 2005, cholesterol is one of the most important substances because it is a building block for the membranes of all cells in the human body and in, and in mammals in general. And it's not just there for structure, it's there for function. It helps regulate what goes into and out of cells. So that's a very important one-two punch. It's part of the membranes and it controls how the membranes function. Of course, you've got to get nutrients in and out of your cells to live well, okay? And the third part of this is the cholesterol molecule itself is a building block to all the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, uh, cortisol, the one that wakes you up and puts you back to sleep, and even vitamin D. Critical to our immune system is a derivative of cholesterol. So you have to start with cholesterol and your liver will build the vitamin D molecule. So that's how critical cholesterol is to the body. So it sounds like cholesterol is more important than we realize. You, you actually need more cholesterol. And so what looks good on a, a life insurance application may not be exactly what's good for good health. Is that right? Oh, oh, completely. It, it's completely true. And, you know, your body synthesizes cholesterol. 80% of the cholesterol flowing in your bloodstream, if they actually measure it, which they don't, is synthesized in your liver. But more importantly... 25% of that cholesterol is in your brain. Your brain can also manufacture cholesterol. That's how important it is to the brain because the brain is so physiologically active, it needs a lot of rebuilding um, building blocks and cholesterol is part of that. So I would say that if you look at cholesterol, there's either one or two conclusions you can reach. Either God decided to destroy mammal and human brains by putting all this cholesterol up there or it's extremely important to our health. So where do we get this notion then that cholesterol is, is bad for us, that it causes heart disease and blood, or, you know, bl uh, blockages in the arteries and all this type of thing? Where do we get that from and, and uh, where do you think uh, it leads properly, when, when properly understood? Well, so the reason why it's been demonized, it's because when you have a disease, cholesterol levels go up. Why? Because it's an important constituent of 
all cell membranes, every single cell. So if you have vascular disease, guess what? You're breaking down vascular tissue. You've got to rebuild it. So looking at cholesterol as a demon is really the antithesis of what it is. It's like saying fire trucks are the reason why there are fires, because oftentimes a fire truck had a fire. Cholesterol is serving the same purpose, literally to put out the fire of wear and tear and tissue destruction in your body. It's coming to heal. Hmm, interesting. So we have high cholesterol, low cholesterol, and some other or high density lipoproteins, not even cholesterol. Let's get into that first of all. <laughs> There's a misnomer here. Uh, and you use the illustration of soap to explain this. So let me give that to, to you first. What is that, what is that all about? Your total cholesterol number does not have cholesterol in it. Total cholesterol is an aggregate of three things, three things added together. Your LDL, which is low-density lipoprotein, no cholesterol in that, plus your HDL, high-density lipoprotein, no cholesterol in that name. And the last part of the equation to calculate your total cholesterol is 20% of your triglyceride numbers, which is a measure of how much sugar you're taking in or very readily available, easily digestible carbohydrates. So in there, there is no cholesterol. But LDL, low-density lipoprotein, is soap. What does soap do? You have a greasy dish. You wash it with water. It's still greasy. You add soap. It removes the grease but that grease is being carried through water and down your drain. Your vascular system, your bloodstream is water-based, but fats are extremely important. We know there are fats and we know there are water-soluble things in our body. To carry the fats to tissue that needs it, like the vascular disease where your tissue is burning up and you need to bring something like cholesterol to repair it, LDL, low-density lipoprotein, the exact same structure as soap, your liquid detergent, your laundry detergent, doesn't make any difference, it's all soap, carries fat-soluble things that would otherwise not be able to be carried through the bloodstream. Think about salad dressing, the oil and the water separate. You don't want that happening in your bloodstream, throw soap in there and it'll become one homogeneous mix. That's what's going on in your bloodstream. Your HDL is the exact same thing except LDL carries fats to your tissue and HDL carries any excess that your tissue doesn't need at this moment back to the liver for either discarded, be, to be discarded or to be recycled. Let's hold the thought on that. We'll be right back with more from The Health Awakening with Dr. Tom Lewis. Stay with us. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, we were talking with our guest, Dr. Tom Lewis, about low-density lipoproteins, not cholesterol, not what you think it is, not, not cholesterol at all, neither is high-density lipoproteins. So, Dr. Lewis, you just explained that low-density lipoproteins uh, bring things to our cells, and high-density lipoproteins take things away from our cells using this soap analogy. So, what does it matter that our LDL is high and our HDL is low, or vice versa? Well, it's really important. And first of all, the treatment that you get to lower your cholesterol doesn't lower cholesterol. It lowers your liver's ability to produce LDL. And LDL is transporting important fats to your tissue. So it's reducing that. And some of those fats, vitamin D, vitamin A, uh, marine uh, fatty acids that are important to brain health, any number of, of different things. So how I look at the so-called lipid panel, which looks at cholesterol, but it's cholesterol now we know that, is to see if you have a proper balance in fat transport, okay? Are you sufficient in healthy fats? And healthy fats are extraordinarily anti-inflammatory. And most diseases of aging are inflammatory in nature. So I think you'd wanna have a molecule like LDL that's bringing anti-inflammatory substances to tissue inflamed or on fire. So how I look at the lipid panel is I look at your LDL and I look at your HDL and that ratio, but not necessarily just the ratio, but the actual absolute values. 
I really don't care what your LDL value is. I'm really looking at HDL. And if HDL is high, say 50 or above, what it tells me is you are bringing through your LDL enough fats from your digestion of, of good food to your tissue, to your cells to keep them happy. And when, so you have enough that HDL needs to be present to carry the excess back. So you're in a sufficiency domain. But below 50, what it's really telling me is your cells are starving for these anti-inflammatory molecules. You're insufficient, either because you're on a drug that's lowering your LDL, that carries them there, or you have enough of an inflammatory process going on that your body is needing much, much more than someone who's in a much healthier state so you have to bring more fats to this scenario. So I can have two people with an LDL of 150. One has an HDL of 80, and one has an HDL of 30. The one with the 30, it's because they are using all the fats in their body, and there's very little to be brought back. They are in an inflammatory state. The one with a 70 or 80, they're sufficient. They're just using some but they have plenty of excess. They're, the fire is already under control or, or snuffed out, so that's no issue. So we call the HDL the good cholesterol, but it is, there's no cholesterol there. There might be a little cholesterol in the HDL, but there's all kinds of other fats in there as well. So, But it is true that as HDL goes up, it tells you that you kind of have things under control. But as LDL goes up, it's not a bad thing but it's telling you that there's a lot of inflammation or irritation or literally a fire burning inside your body that it's trying to put out. But I must reiterate, total cholesterol, the number you get is LDL, which is just a carrier for fats. Cholesterol is one fat. No one's measuring how much cholesterol is in an LDL particle. HDL is the one, another high density lipoprotein that brings the fats back. Once again, there may be cholesterol in there or there may not be. And then the last value in the calculation for total cholesterol is 20% of your triglycerides. So if your triglycerides are 100, you add 20 to your total cholesterol score to get that number. But once again, total cholesterol, nobody knows what their cholesterol number is in there. Nobody. Hmm. Now, does that matter? Does it matter that we know or we don't know what our free cholesterol is? Is there some something we're missing here by not knowing that number? Well, yes, because cholesterol makes up every single membrane of every single cell in the human body. So like in cancer, the tumor is ripping tissue apart. And at the molecular level, it's ripping, or microscopic level, it's ripping cells apart. So if you have cancer, I would argue that your free cholesterol number would go up. We don't have access to that number. The closest we can get to this as something as a surrogate for it is something like VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. But even that is still not the cholesterol molecule. So I, I say that we have, since 1987, when statin drugs were introduced to lower cholesterol, really lowering LDL, they've grossed a half a trillion dollars to lower cholesterol. But not one person, not one doctor knows what the number is for what they're lowering. They use LDL, but LDL, I mean, vitamin A, retinoic acid, extremely important for the eye, retinoic acid, the retina. LDL carries vitamin A. If you don't have LDL, you're not transporting a fat-soluble vitamin like vitamin A. Vitamin D, fat soluble. Vitamin E, vitamin K, all these very important things. So someone could have a low vitamin D level because they don't have enough cholesterol. Is that right? No, no, because they they've been they've been treated with a drug that doesn't impact cholesterol. It imports the transportation of cholesterol among other fat soluble substances. So how much is that LDL? carrying in terms of cholesterol, no one knows, you know, because it has all these other things in it as well. Interesting. Okay. Well, a fascinating conversation about cholesterol with Dr. Tom Lewis. We'll be back with more from The Health Awakening. Stay with us. And 
welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, we were talking about some fascinating things you probably didn't know about cholesterol with Dr. Tom Lewis. And Dr. Tom, it seems to me that the uh, the most important thing we need to look at is not to total cholesterol, not even LDL. A lot of people are worried about their LDL and lowering that, as you mentioned, with uh, statins and things of this nature. But the most important thing is HDL. Yeah, I mean, that's that's absolutely true. I mean, your liver is producing both of these for a reason, to help you balance things out. But at the end of the day, the balance it's trying to affect is determined by the nutrients you bring in. So if your body needs healthy fats transported to tissue, your LDL will go up accordingly. And so, yeah, if you're not as healthy, the LDL might go up higher than someone who's healthy. But I'm really worried about sufficiency. And so that's why I've totally focused, and I think everybody should just totally focus in on their HDL level. Not even the ratio. A lot of folks think it's a ratio. It's the absolute number, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, something like that for your HDL. And you want it to, at minimum, be 50. How do you do that? You make sure that you are consuming and maybe even more importantly, absorbing well, because you are not what you eat, you are what you absorb, absorbing healthy fats, avocados, fats from nuts, particularly in my opinion, fats from fish, because fish really truly is brain food. So if your HDL is low, you are using all the fats that your body wants, and maybe you're even insufficient in those fats. So you can tend towards a little bit of a ketogenic diet. I'm not a fan of any particular diet style, but really just the idea is to increase the intake of healthy fats in your life. So it can be plant-based, but most of the plant-based are not omega-3 in nature, and the brain is really dependent on that. So you really have to have a balance of omega-6 and omega-3s. Look at it generally as plants are more, more omega-6 in composition, whereas marine products fish are more omega-3, the meats will be a little bit more in diversity. Things like a walnut as a, from a plant, seed will have more, um, and nuts will have more omega-3 than say a pecan. Uh, peanuts have very low omega-3, but they do have healthy fats in them. So it, it's all about creating that balance. All of them will raise your HDL, but really you should endeavor to raise your HDL making sure you're getting marine fats. And if you're afraid to eat fish, take krill oil, take cod liver oil, something like that. grab fed products, especially harvested in the spring, um, when the grass sprigs are really light green, have a lot more omega-3 fatty acids in them. So eating grass-fed meat that have been out to pasture, you know, is a, is a good thing to do as well. So my, my main things are, if you're afraid of mercury in the fish, go earlier in the food chain, sardines. Um, I do salmon, it's not too bad. Oysters are very high in nutrient density. Avocado, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds are all good. Lots of the nuts, staying away, being more cognizant of the omega-6, omega-3 ratio. My favorites are macadamia, pistachio, um, walnuts, pecans. Those kind of go to the top of my list of healthy nuts. And nuts are loaded with fat, up to 80% fat. Grass-fed butter, um, cooked with MCT oil, olive oil, no canola oil, no vegetable oil, none of these refined oils, soybean oils. Avoid restaurants of any type with fried food because they're all in the GMO soybean oils, which are pro-inflammatory. And guess what? You've now taken in an oil, but your LDL is going to go up. And then your doctor is going to get all paranoid. Hey, your LDL is up because you created inflammation. And then your body's trying to throw in the anti-inflammatory to that fire, the non-GMO uh, healthy fats. This is a well-rounded conversation around HDL. I want to thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Lewis. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute to uh, find out how more can be found out through your website and the things you do, uh, not just with cholesterol, but all kinds of tests. And we'll be back with more from The Health Awakening. Stay with us.
Well, thank you for joining us today on The Health Awakening. Our guest has been Dr. Tom Lewis. And Dr. Tom, you offer lots of different testing, not just to do with uh, cholesterol, but you have an entire blood panel that can tell uh, folks what kinds of diseases they are maybe susceptible to. And what other kind of uh, testing do you offer? Well, first of all, we have a pretty robust team at Health Revival Partners. So it's healthrevivalpartners.com with several MDs that, that work with us as, as well as health coaches and medical scientists. And you might know one of those, uh, Scott, I'm not so sure, but yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, the main driver of chronic disease is inflammation. So we run inflammatory markers, C-reactive protein and uric acid and homocysteine. We can health and disease into six categories, which we do testing on immune health, infection, inflammation, tissue deterioration, metabolic health, and oxidative stress. So we're measuring all that. And you'd be surprised, one of the biggest drivers of adverse health for people 50 and older is periodontal disease from bad teeth, even if you don't have root canals or it could be cavitation from a wisdom teeth taken out. And that's a test we offer. It's a home, it's a sent, sent home, home test kit. Just gargle, swish, and send it back in, and you'll be surprised how positive so many folks are. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for joining us. Again, go to healthrevivalpartners.com to find out more and discover all the tests that you can do to find out where you are on that health continuum. Thank you again for joining us today on The Health Awakening, and we will see you again next time. Thank you for joining us today on The Health Awakening. You can catch the replay of this episode and see our complete show archive at healthawakening.tv. For more information about our guests today and all they have to offer, please visit their website on the bottom of your screen. And please remember, the information you saw today is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice, nor do the views expressed reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result.